Okay. So welcome everyone. Uh, so this tutorial session is about DBT. Um, let me just share my screen. So I hope you hear me well. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, so uh, today I will try to do like um, a little demo after like going through some introduction about DBT and um, hopefully it's going to be um, uh, clarifying. Uh, as always, you can stop me at, at any point to ask any questions you want. Uh, so DBT is, uh, well, a data build tool, as this is the name. Um, it's, uh, it's a transformation tool. So it's, a, it's an open source software that um, allows us to do transformation inside the warehouse. So basically, you don't need to take our, our data outside of our, our warehouse to transform that, transform it. DBT will do that for us. And it does it in a modular way. Um, it's like in, in an easy way and in a modular way. We will see that in a bit uh, more. But um, as it says here, running DBT run, which is a command we use to run, um, to implement our transformations and this is going to 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 like transform our data without it leaving the warehouse um so are they like the here dbt is doing the t in the elt the extract load transformation um so uh in DBT, we have models. As if you, if this is connected to what we discussed yesterday about data models. So in DBT, you have also um, what is like um, basically it's creating a data model in a sense. But in like to the actually define the model in it's a specific uh, um, DBT context. Uh, the the DBT model is is represented by a single SQL file, and uh, by and it, it's, it's, um, and this SQL file has a single select statement. Basically, how when we write, like as we discussed before, maybe the transformations we're going to be doing, like we have our data in like um, in a particular schema in in uh, like a bunch of tables or one table. We can perform transformation like um, joining or aggregation. And to do that, we can just, we are going to be writing not the whole SQL query to do this actual transformation, but a select statement. We can, we're going to see, to see that uh, in a bit. But the, the main value in DBT is that you don't really need to do your tra the transformation itself. Um, uh, um, okay, so uh, um, so for example, uh, just to say an example, so if you want to create a table that is uh, like um, joining two tables you have, uh, if you want to do this by hand, you're going to write a, a query that is going to like you have to write create table and create this new table and then populate it with the data from these two tables joined in a particular way. So you have to write these two kind of like two queries in a sense. Um, but uh, if, if we're using DBT, what you're going to, to do is you're going to just write the select statement that have the join between the two existing tables. And DBT is going to do the materialization for you. So if you are choosing to materialize your your um, your models as tables, you're going to do that um, directly. So just um, this will take the select statement, create the table for you, and populate it. And then you will just after running DBT run, 
you're going to find your new table in your database. Um, okay, so in this sense, uh, so it's like, um, so it's easy to handle, it's modular because you can, why is it modular? Because you can write models that depend on each other. So um, instead of like, you can do like a join and then you want to do an aggregation in one part and then you want to do something different in a different part, you can do like, you can reference basically models in each other. So you can create a model and then create a new model that reference it. And in this way, you are going to be, instead of writing um, rewriting the query each time you're going to use it, you can just create one model one time and then reference it in other models that you want to use it in. Even if it's like the, what you want to create, instead of creating a table, of course, a table is persistent. You, you can ask me like what I'm talking about. If, if uh, like uh, the, the, the thing you want to reference is a table. Of course, you create it just one time, and then you can just um, take data from there. But you can also, because you can also like create a view, which is not persistent, and uh, well, it's a temporary table, as you know it, um, the CTE. You can also do that as a model, and then um, any model that you want to use that uh, temporary table in, you can just reference the model there and um so you are not so it's modular because you are not rewriting all these queries um again the other thing is that it's also uh if you want to do any change in this like uh, you can have a, like a long list of ref uh, models that reference each other and you can change any one of them without worrying about um uh, how to like make the chain consistent among all of them so because dbt is going to propagate the chain for you um so this is i'm just saying like maybe it's not very clear what i'm saying we're going to see that better in the demo but like this is like the theoretical part so um so this is just like uh, why use dbt this is what i already said in uh, but like uh, in point so you have the modularization um because you're creating reusable models uh you have dependency management because okay you can their models can depend on each other and you can um if dbt make sure that they are, they are executed in the right order you have version control and that's uh, uh because dbt it, it integrates with with git and you can basically um, any data transformation you're doing, you can keep track of it so that you can, um, like, uh, know what changes you have done to your data uh, over time. You have documentation, this is very important, um, and testing. So these are, like, things that are uh, easily available in DVT that you can document your data models and you can test them, like, you can actually write tests easily for your transform for like uh, for your transform data um okay so this is like uh what uh, so this like what we had before is that a theoretical thing about like why use dbt and what is its value um this is like more details about like um yeah so what we are going to be using is what is called dbt core which is the cli tool uh there is a like um, our paid uh, uh, cloud um, um, version of dbt but it's paid so we don't care about it it's, it's, it's like a, it has dbt core but also extra um, uh, services with it um, so okay so um, what is important here uh, like what is our data platform here is like your data uh, so did dbt has to connect to your database right your database or warehouse uh, or whatever whatever your data pl the platform is the dbt has to connect to that to it and to connect to it you have to use an adapter basically um so like uh, when you install dbt core you can specify the adapter right away when in your installation or you can like uh um in the storage later on uh there are like um uh 
uh, official adapters with for Postgres and like big query redshift and all these um, that platforms. Um, others are like uh, community supported adapters, so these are also available in a sense. So they are not like from officially from that uh, DBT itself, but um, so DBT like the the team that created DBT itself, but um, they, they are community supported. Uh, so I suppose that most of you are using Postgres, so like that's easy. You can install that right away by installing pip install dbt with postgres or of course you can use maybe you're using the one in like oh, in docker um again it has to be um like adapted to a particular uh data platform okay so uh next is the demo so any questions so far Maybe I want to quickly, but Uh, okay, give me a moment. Uh, uh, I'll be back. Um, and in that meantime, I think about a question maybe that you have about DBT. Questions about other things we can like leave to the end of the session. Um, okay, so no questions. Uh, if there are no questions, we can move on to the demo part. And uh, it started with I already have uh, this is I already have my database that um, have this. Uh, I created this traffic database that has like. A, uh, a sample of the data for this challenge and I created uh, two tables basically vehicles and trajectory um I can like look at each one of them but okay just to show um so I have this table has four um uh four columns track ID type travel distance and average speed with this type so um okay so i already have that um and what i'm going to do so i already like have some so that's what we're looking for but the first step is to will be like uh in so here i'm installing like dbt locally and to do that we just um uh, create a virtual environment, which I already did um, use that. And then, of course, I'm going to be using pip install uh, dbt postgres. This is the one with, uh, with the postgres adapter. 
it's like I it's already installed for me, so it's already there. And um, so what you next is what next you do is you run dbt in it. So this is going to create for you uh, a project. And to see that, let me just like maybe um, go to a different folder and show you how it works because it's like dbt in it. So it's it, it, you can either um, provide a project name right away in this command and then uh, you are going to be filling the, um, the information for the like the database um like in the in the profile file but um you can also like just use dbt in it um to and work interactively basically it's going to tell it, to ask you interactively what to, like the information you need to provide so first you have to provide the name for the project and let's say it's a dpt demo and um okay so it's already there because because there is already a folder called that uh let me show this a different name let me um okay uh yeah. Oh, of course, like the, my file name is called DVD. That was that's why it's, 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 it's refusing to do that. Sorry. So, yeah, I would just need to use a different name. I just want to show you this. Uh, okay. So, let me call it my SVT project. I want to show that in Okay, and then it's going to ask me like which database I could use, but I only have an adapter for Postgres, so let's we'll use one. Then this is like uh, the Postgres uh, information, so the host for me is localhost. And the port is yes for five four three two. Um, and this uh the username for my case is postgres and the password so these are all for the database and then which database i'm going to be working with my database is called traffic okay and the schema this is an, a new name you can add and uh, the recommendation is that um you use like a uh, dev and your name just uh, because um at if you are collaborating with other people but it can be any other name like it's just like a, any schema name um let me call it dbt schema for now the number of threads this is like um if i choose any number between uh one or more than one uh okay so it's telling me that uh this file was created with, with the creation of like the first dbt model it, it's usually like at your home directory um dot dbt profile dot yaml it defines for you like each pro dbt project and just to look at it control so you can see here uh this is a new project we created uh sorry the new project here the one that I created right now so i already have another one there but um, so this is a new one of the name and uh, this is like the information i entered already so this is the database um the information i enter i i provided um interactively but of course i can um also choose to to do this in, in interactively anyway um once i do that i will have you will see that you will it will create for you um um a a, a dire, uh sorry a folder with the project name and it's clear here and just we'll see here that i have this the name of my project 
activity project. And if I see the there, you'll find that I have uh, a list of um, folders and files. Um, and because I already have one here, so let's, for now, let's use the one we have um, here. Let me remove this. Wait, because I don't want it. And uh, so it's from here. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Is that a question? Or was that a mistake? Okay. Um, all right. Uh, But, all right, so just to see here, because I have this traffic DBT model I, or project I created before, and looking at it, you will find that what we have, uh, and in part of what we have is DBT project, the TMO, and um, it defines for you like um, uh, as a, okay, so they have the project, the, and, that where the profile, the name is the profile, uh, the path to your models and stuff. And um, when you initialize your DBT, it comes with examples of data models. So, and these are listed here. So, um, uh, models are like, okay, let's, let's look at the examples first. So, uh, ignore these files, these, I, I added them later, but like this is a file that comes as examples. And you can see, of course, the, these are like independent of your, of your, of your data. So the, the, what is the selected statement you have is that you're creating like, um, uh, uh, like uh, uh, this, um, um, you're creating, you're creating a, a, a temporary uh, city with uh, using the query with and selecting one as ID. And then uh, this is just like, um, it's not depending on any database. It's just an example from DTB, uh, DBT. And the selected statement is the, in the, the, at the bottom, selecting all from this. So uh, what, what do we have? What, what will that uh, DBT do? So, um, sorry, so you have to go inside this. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm confusing you a little bit. Um, so, um, Uh, okay. You can run dbt debug to make sure that everything is like your connection to the database is correct, is, is fine. Uh, I, I forgot to do that before. Um, and then uh, once you run uh, dbt run, I already run that this on this, um, on these examples, you will go and find that they they are created because they are materialized as views they are not um so as I remember this is my this is my database right and you can see that after running um um dbt run on the examples that were provided by um by dbt i got a new schema for my database so this was the original one but uh then the new one is is the name of like i used for my schema here in the profiles i use this name is dev empty none which as i told you it's a recommendation you can find it here and um, to see the views actually, 
just uh, small moment. I like to see the views that are related to this schema. I can use this Postgres. Um, so I know the schema. So anything that is um, um, yep, sorry, I made a mistake. I forgot the name I'll use it. Anyway, so I will see that this other schema, which is dev empty now, I created, has these two, um, which are like my first DBT model and my second DBT model. These are the examples. One of them is a view, one of them is a table. And, um, here they are. Um, okay. So we can actually look at them here in Postgres by, um, we have to use the, take the schema name and my first DBT model. So this is a, sorry, table and look at it. You can see that it has only one column with ID with a type integer. And of course, you can select from it. Um, select from, and let me just take the name. Here. Yeah, so it's only have like this one value. But anyway, so that's what I have. Okay. So these are the examples that are provided. They don't have any value, really, but they just show you an the example. Um, this uh, schema.yaml file here, we will talk about it later. But let's say working with my own data, let's say that I created, uh, let's say this. So what I'm doing here is that I'm creating uh, a view that is um, aggregating uh, the directory information for each vehicle. So um, if you remember, like, okay, I don't know if you remember, like uh, what is the trajectory, my trajectories table was. Um, uh, it had uh, a speed, so it, it is like it, um, basically have the information for for a vehicle at a specific um timestamp and so i'm um, like uh, here i'm aggregating by vehicle and getting the maximum of everything okay and um this is just an example it's not necessarily something that i really have a particular value but okay i'm just calling this um, that, so trajectory summary so this is uh, the model itself the file itself is called trajectory summary that means the view or table created from this is going to be called that. DBT is going to do that for me. Um, I have other examples here uh, as well. Like um, I have like a, but, but let's just uh, looking at this. These the others are similar. And to um, okay to run this, I'm going to be using. Okay, let me just on dbt debug to see what it's going to give me so a dbt debug is just going to check the connection for you connection to the database so do that after you after right right away after like uh, initiating your dbt um next is going to um what i'm going to do is run use dbt run And um, so, like, it's completely successful. Uh, completely successfully, everything is fine. You can see the steps here, uh, but um, just for for now, just let me just go see the. I should be able to see that in my database. So now, um, have to clear. My screen here, so this is really um, so I'm connecting to the traffic and um, just to see, like, um, 
um, BTS, anything that is related to my uh, DBT schema. And you will see that I have new stuff. So in, um, besides uh, these two examples, now I have other views, which one of them is this trajectory summary that we looked at. So let's look at it. Um, uh, okay. And you can see, yes, it has all we can, um, it, it like it give me the information and the, uh, the columns and types can also like do anything with it, like select from it. Um, okay. Of course, I cannot use this here. I'm just limited to like see. And yeah, you can see like the top of the table. Anyway, the, the, the thing is that basically this model, which is a view, is already uh, available in your database. It's just you did that with just writing the select statement and running DBT run. So it's very simple. Just to look at the other ones. Um, just for a second, let me just delete this. Yes. Okay, so from trajectory summary, I created also another full summary, which is um, if the trajectory summary is like aggregating, the value is the trajectories. The necessary table here, I'm joining it with um, the values from the vehicles table. So I have my select statement and I'm choosing values from vehicles, which is a table in my database. So I can use its name right away here. And I, But I can also use um, um, data from here. I'm referencing here instead of a table, I'm referencing the model itself. And to do that, I just use this um, uh, curly, uh, so uh, this uh, syntax. I use ref and the name of the model uh, with no extension, anything. And uh, yeah, so when it's, when, when, um, because this model references this one, you can see that, uh, you can see that actually in the steps is that like uh, it's going to create the trajectory summary first and then it's going to create the full summary because like um, the, the uh, DBT like handles the um, dependencies for you like it's it's going to be creating them in the right order. Uh, um, uh, what else uh, can we see here? Um, very specific thing here, also another kind of reference. Um, okay, we're referencing, uh, this is another, a third model that is referencing the, the model for a fault summary. So basically we built three models, starting from trajectory summary, fault summary and distance summary. These are each one, like depend on the, the one before. So that's why, um, DBT will handle that and uh, so it creates the, the this is summary last of all. Okay, so this is one thing. So this is creating the models themselves. The next is uh, documenting your models. Uh, how you do that? So this is where this schema.yaml file comes in. You create this schema.yaml in the same directory where the models are in. So of course, like all your models have to be in this directory called models, but you can put them in uh, subdirectories. Um, like uh, for example, here I'm putting them all together just uh, outside, but uh, if I have many models, it will be, it will make sense to like uh, divide them into subdirectories. And uh, the schema file regarding each like, um, where I want to put the documentation to 
to whatever model have to be in the same subdirectory. Uh, okay, here uh, what I do is I define um, um, okay mo uh, the models. I will have the name of the model, and then I can have a description for that particular model. And so, for example, I hit. I'm describing this trajectory summary as a one line for each trajectory, total time, max acceleration, and max speed during time. So this is just a short description of it. But you can also add description for particular fields or particular columns. So you can add these columns and then um, specify the name and add a description. Another thing you can do, you do in this schema file is also you add tests. And these tests are run by dbt. Um, you can see here I um, I have two tests, unique and not null, that I'm applying to this track ID. Track ID is the primary key in this in this way in this um, case, and I need them to be unique and not null. Um, and in the same way, I'm like also um, documenting the other models. Another thing I can do is also test the relationship. So in full summary, this is uh, the other model that depends on the trajectory summary. I uh, here in the test, I am adding the relationship to the trajectory summary and which field it is. So here, DBT will check that um, that uh, like uh, this uh, the column here in this full summary have the same like have doesn't have values that are not they don't exist in trajectory summary um another thing another test we can use is um use accepted values and uh this here you can specify actual values that can exist in the particular column for example here i'm, I'm listing the types of vehicles that can can be they so there are no more so it shouldn't like if anything happened somewhere and it, it's going to be catch here and to okay let's run the test first to run the test uh we we use um okay we use here dbt test simple command and it's going to be running the test for me Uh, so there is a failure um, in the test not null in my first my first uh, dbt model Okay, so um, all right. So the test I defined for my like um, for my new models are running. So you can see that here, like pass not null for distance summary type. Um, like you can read the actual output, but here what I'm failing, what is failing is the one for my first DBT model. ID, uh, so let's see that. So this is my first DBT model here, and this is its schema. So, um, um, Yeah, so because here we are selecting uh, null as ID, so I'm getting null and instead of one, it's like uh, if 
if I leave it to be like on this, like select one as ID, let's see that. And let's see if it will pass the test. Um, Okay, and then um, BBT, yes. You can see that, yes, the problem was so like the, now my test is running completely successfully. Um, the last thing we can look at is creating the documentation. So we already talked about what the documentation are and to just to generate, to tell DBT to generate them, let's say uh, 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 DBT docs generate. And to actually look at them, uh, we can uh, use dbt docs um, serve. And that will take you directly into, this is just like um, a browser. I think, I hope you're seeing this. So here you can see that the project I have is this dbt. Uh, traffic dbt the one i create and um is that the like it looks exactly the same as like the structure i have in my project so just to look at what i have here you can see that i will have like the description of the table itself here and then any like if i wrote description for columns i will have columns the type and any description I have added if there are tests like the unique and not null test and it will tell me also like what is referenced by like full summary and see the code here and you can see like all of them but you can also see is the lineage um uh, lineage graph which is um like uh distance summary is referencing full summary um uh, and full summary is like referencing like you can see the full thing here so trajectory summary is like is referenced by full summary and this one is referenced by distance summary um and yeah so uh basically that's it for like uh, the show this simple demo of how dbt works so uh i hope that you're getting this and this wasn't like uh i felt like i was a bit uh unorganized but i hope that was like clear uh any questions is it um Okay, uh, let's see. So, Abdus Salam. Okay, so I I noticed you did not use uh, the Docker. Yeah, right. I don't know. Is, is is there a reason why you you decided not to? Not really. It's no. uh, it's just another option. Um, like because the installation is very simple. I'm just using. Uh, uh, I used like. Um, a local installation is because um, it's it just it's very simple. It's not like DBT is a, as a standalone is fine. Like when but what it makes sense to install it with Docker. As we're telling you, Docker is easier because like you can have them all together already connected to each other. Like if you install them locally, if you install Airflow, DBT, and Postgres locally, you need to do the connections between them yourself uh this like if you have this docker compose you already have the connections figured out between them already so um docker is just easier but this is like um another options you can another option you, you can use but just to say there is no specific reason why i'm 
I'm, I installed it locally. It's just another option. Um, Sheila? Um, hello. Um, I saw that you had split your data sets, your data. I wanted, I was hoping if you can see the, you can show us the trajectory table. I want to see some, yeah. The trajectory table? Um, okay. You just want to look at it? Yeah, I just uh, want to look at yours. All right. So, um, should I look at it here in the, already like uh, in the database? Um, so let's select format. So uh, three. Um, let's wait a second. So so hold on. It's trajectory. Sorry. So yeah. So. Okay, this is my table. Okay, so your table only has um, it has seven columns. The track yes. ID plus the the six columns, and then it keeps iterating itself for each yes. track ID. Exactly. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, okay. and then also, uh, Kumi had asked what the thread is for, and I also think I have the same question. You told us that for threads, you're supposed to write a limit of between it's between from one to any number so what's the purpose of a thread uh the thread is like uh, basically telling like um uh um i'm just saying like you can choose um okay so the thread itself is the value is telling basically dbt on how many um when it's doing the run when it's creating your the materializing your models um how many to work on at the same time uh more or less this is this is what is you're telling it to do so it's not really specified by anything like um, uh, hardware or like uh, on your or your machine uh, it's just like uh, it will it will um if you have like really many models it it will um uh if you have a, like a high number of threads, it will it will it will have it run quicker in a sense. Um, but uh, I mean, I'm expecting that in our case is not going to affect the speeds much because we don't have many that many models or many dependencies. But yeah, the thread is just like how many is going to be working parallelly on. Um, Okay, and that's then, um, yeah, that's okay. clear. Um, and yeah. then the last question, from what you've said about um, having Docker, does it mean for this assignment, for this project that we're doing, for us to be able to work with DBT and Airflow, we don't need to have Docker installed? You don't need, you, you, it's not required to have Docker. You can install everything locally and uh, work there but um docker is just an option to, for an installation you can install one or more or even all of them through docker or locally uh depending on like what is easier for you or like what is like more convenient to your uh, machine Thank you. or Thank an you. os okay um just one thing i remember right now before this question uh we didn't talk about materialization um so uh in the materialization is like uh, is uh, the model for you do you want your model to be created as uh, a view or as a table and this thing you can either um like you can see here in the dbt project uh, yaml file you can decide for example that all my example will be materialized as a view actually i think view is a default if you don't specify anything if you like remove this part it's going to be still going to everything is going to be materialized as a view i can also change it to a table if i want that and um uh the other thing is that i can also in in the model this is like a general but i can also specify a specific uh, model here so i can go um 
uh, I, I, it's actually explained here in the, but I can go to the model itself and change the materialization in this, in, the, in this way. So here, even though I chose the materialization in general to be a view, here I, I change it to a table for this particular model. And uh, you can do that either here or you can even like specify your models in the big gamma file and like list the model itself and list the materialization you want to use with it. So we have uh, multiple options, but um, uh, um, okay. This is wrong. All right. Um, okay. So next question. So I just wanted to mention this because I forgot. Hannah. And are you there? Like, uh, maybe. Um, okay, so this already uh, answered this question. So maybe Hannah, like, changed her mind. Uh, anyway, so any other questions? Abdurrahman? Uh, hello. Uh, I didn't get uh, the difference between view and table in the materialization. Ah, okay, so um, so the table, uh, well, the view, uh, what is the difference between view and table? Uh, so the table is like, is something that is already like in your database is actually like the table is created uh, like at a specific time and it's like populated. Um, a view is, is how to say it's a query that is run every time meaning that you don't actually create a table it's not persistent it's just like um uh, a query that is uh, uh um is run ev like every time you call the view you run this query to create the view uh, so it's like something like uh, temporary that we use within a query so like uh, in practice what does what is the difference um a view is something that you want to create uh like um a table is something that you want to use like if you really want a, a specific let's say like i want to join or aggregate my data in a specific way and then store that permanently in a table because i i, I really know that i'm going to use this table um, I'm, I'm going to make use of it. Uh, so I materialize it as a table. If I'm just using this for like, a, um, actually this is not so big a difference. The biggest difference is like, if the query to create the table is really long, right, aggregation and join and, and whatever, you want to run it only one time. You don't, or a few times, you don't want to run it over and over again. A, queer, uh, a view, uh, because it's run every time, is going to be really updated. So it's going to be up to date. So if the, um, the components that they were created from change, the view is going to change. But um, it's that right away when you run it. Uh, so this is the, the, the two differences between them. Um, of course, uh, uh, so the table. Of course, uh, the table takes uh, memory space in your in the database. A view doesn't take a space because I mean, it's as I said, it's just uh, basically a query that is run every time you call it, but is not actually stored. Um, is that? I mean, this is just a basic idea. Do you? Yeah, I think I think I have some it? understanding now. It's about uh, its best complexity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, no. Thank it's you. a yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So exactly. So it's like this. It, it, like one of them is a stored. Is stored actually in your database. The other one is not stored. So there is no data stored. You just have a query that is called like um. You save the query itself. You don't save the data. That's the view. 
the table, you save the data, the table, the data itself in a table. Okay. Uh, so, is there any other questions? So, as we are actually out of time, so this is perfect. We can end the session here. And of course, any more questions, um, we can continue on Slack. Thank you everyone for being here. And um, uh, good luck and see you later.